Hey, my name is Aaron Sawicki. This is Life in Color. I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, JT White. I don't he's, know about legend, but hey. <laughs> hey, legend. He's the creator and overall conceptual artist behind this awesome documentary series. JT, how's it going? Thank you so much. I'm doing all right, man. Good. I'm doing good. Well, let's just jump right into it. I wanted to ask a couple questions I've been uh, wanting to ask myself, and then we'll get into your tattoos, and uh, yeah. let's go from there. Definitely. So what was your inspiration behind uh, creating something like this, this docu-series? Um, really it was because I'm sort of not so much addicted to YouTube, but I'm spending a lot of my time on YouTube. Um, and I found this series called Behind the Ink. Excuse me, uh, Behind the Ink on YouTube. And it was just sort of, they go around and ask all the different bands about their tattoos and stuff. And so I thought, well, that's really cool. I would like to do something like that. Just so happened while I was in college, you know, uh, over the College of Brockport, that, you know, I was getting into the media over there, I was getting into, you know, video editing, I was getting into that whole field. And so I ran the idea over by my professor, and she goes, that's awesome, mm -hmm. go for it, you know. And so I put out on YouTube, or yeah, on YouTube, I went out on Facebook, I said, hey, because I knew a lot of my, it started off with a lot of my friends, because I knew a lot of them had, um, a lot of ink, and um, so I put out there, I said, hey, I have this series I'm trying to get going. If you have ink and like to be interviewed, hey, let me know. And so, it, you know, so like I said, I started out with just my friends, you know, I think I ended up getting, I think it was 12 or 13 people for mm -hmm. the first round, which was awesome, not going to lie. Um, very long couple of weeks, but uh, <laughs> very, very much worth it, though. So over last summer, I released a video, uh, you know, the full you know, video every single week. And, you know, it, it was it was a lot of fun, honestly, you know, just figuring out just different styles like that, you know, just getting the, the entire experience, you know, having to get okay for the music that I was using, you know, getting the names correct, you know, just getting everything, you know what I mean? So it, mm -hmm. was, it was a lot of fun, though. It, it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> it's a really big undertaking to do something like a docuseries, getting 12, 13, 14 episodes and things like that put together, and also the interviews, the interviewees, you know, setting up times and all that. What was the most challenging part behind all that? Um, really just like you said, just getting the interviews, um, because just sort of getting like the time and everything down, mm -hmm. because like most of them, they were in college, you know, with me, and that's sort of how I got, you know, in contact with a lot of them, you know, because I had met them in college and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, that was just sort of the big thing, it was like, hey, when, when aren't you in class, you know, right, like, yeah. oh crap, well, I'm in class at that time. I mean, the success rate's so, there, and I've noticed with the last couple of videos, you've been going after more of the musicians and definitely. sort of the artists in Rochester and the surrounding areas. Is that something that you'd like to continue doing and uh, kind of making it more that direction? Definitely, yeah. I have um, I went out and I interviewed uh, Danny Case, lead, str lead, yeah, lead stringer, lead singer of, uh, of Vanity Strikes. I also interviewed uh, Colton, who's lead singer of Reps. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get out there a little bit. You know, I'm trying to work on a couple other guys, you know, a little bit more of the other um, bigger name, you know, bands in Rochester. You know, obviously they have very hectic lives as well. You know, so it, that's, I'm figuring out is the other big part now is just sort of finding time where they can do it as well as I can. Yeah. With that being said, I'm still going to go back. You know, if there's other people, you know, they might not be in bands. They might not be, you know, well-known. It's fine. I want to talk to you. I want to... I want to know the ink that you have. I want to know why you have it. I want to know what the meaning is behind it. So I'm definitely trying to open it up, but still have it be local, I guess, mm -hmm. in a sense, you know, sort of, you know, just everyday people, you know. And a lot of these musicians, Rochester, is exactly what they are. You know, they're just very local guys, very down to earth, you know. Um, Colton, he works at a, a detailing shop. You know, so I mean, he sings on band. So I mean, it's yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, so I, that interview was a lot of fun as well. But. Is there anyone in Rochester, maybe not in Rochester, but anyone in general would be your like ideal person to interview? Like, is there kind of like that dream that like grasp like? <laughs> If I could interview them, that would just be the greatest. If I had a chance to sit down, talk ink, talk shop, you know, music, any of that with. Um, well, there's been a couple. Um, there's uh, Joey from Band Outlier. I've been trying to set something up with him. Um, but then I was sort of toying around with the idea, and I don't know why. I don't know if it can happen, but I want to try it. Um, I want to talk to Brother Weez. That'd be cool. I want to see if I can set something like that up, and if I can... That would sort of be that dream of like, dude, you just got Brother Weeds, you can interview him. You know, he's the guy that's always interviewing people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that's, you know, something that can, if it's a realistic goal, but it's definitely something that I could see maybe happening. 
All right, so moving on from the sort of behind the scenes and everything um, about the docu series and everything like that, let's get into your ink. What was the first piece? Where did you uh, get it? Who was the artist and sort of the story and inspiration behind it? Um, so yeah, so majority of mine, um, you know, sort of a little OCD with that. I have uh, 12 right now, or 11, sorry, 11. A little OCD with, you know, just numbers and stuff like that. Really weird. Anyways, um, so 9 out of the 11 have been done by Crazy Joe uh, over in uh, Avon, a Crazy Joe tattoo. Um, one was done in Brockport, a pink armadillo, you know, in a high voltage in Batavia. Okay. Um, but my first one... Just give me, I sort of had that go big or go home mentality, I guess, when I went and got this. Because, you know, most people, you know, like, get something small to see if, you know, they can tolerate it. Me, I just decided, you know what? Screw it! Here we go. And that was this baby right here, my microphone. Um, it also has uh, You, Me, at Six lyric that says, I'm married to the music for better or for worse. And also yeah. has um, my two college radio stations uh, as well. And... So this one, the microphone gets me a lot of looks in good ways. So yeah, everyone's just like, oh my gosh, man, that's awesome. And this one I got in January, two years ago, in 2015, I got this okay. one. Um, so yeah, but anyway, so when I got this one, it was just sort of, I was getting really heavy into music, or not into music, but just into the radio, and just like, this is something I want to do. And, you know, I'm going to be a DJ, you know, this, 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 and, you know, that's sort of falling by the wayside. But anyways, um, but it was just sort of my, sort of that uh, gateway, I guess you say, into just okay. getting into radio. Yeah. And so the one is, is 90.7 uh, FM, the music, which was a Genesee Community College, which was my first college. Um, that was the station there. And then I also have 89.1 The Point, which is the Brockport College station. Um, so I got those. Excuse me. And, uh... So the lyric I added, I think it was like two or three days before I went and got it. I mm -hmm. said, hey, Joe, I got an idea. Just go with it. You know, I'm just kidding. But I says, you know, Joe, I got an idea. I'd like to add this to it. He's like, okay, cool. Yeah. And so like he says, says, I'm married to the music, for better or for worse, which in radio, it's, it made sense to me. You know, it's just sort of uh, like, you know, you and I were both big metalheads. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a lot of the heavier guys, you know, you know, and, but you know, you work at IR Media right now, which is, you know, usually a lot of Top 40, a lot of, you know, pop music, you know, sports talk, um, you know, you got Kimberly and Beck, all those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I work at a country station right now. I mean, I love country music, but, like, it's not my first, you know, choice when I get up in the morning. I usually don't listen to country. But anyways, um, it was just sort of that you go where the jobs are, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. I knew a kid cannot stand country music in the least, thinks it's the worst thing to ever happen. He ended up working at a country station, I think, for about six months. Yeah. It's the, it's definitely it just, the love that takes you there. Exactly, and it's yeah. not what you're doing. or it, it, Well, it is what you're doing, but it's not what you're listening to. But it's it's you're doing something that you love, so exactly. you don't mind it. Yeah, exactly. And so that, that was sort of the uh, the inspiration behind that. And the, uh, the other kind of funny, oh well type thing with this one was it was my first tattoo, first mistake. Yeah. So... I didn't notice it, Joe didn't notice it, so I was like, alright, well, oh well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, instead of saying married with two R's, it says married with one R. And so, I didn't <laughs> notice it, one. Joe doesn't, didn't notice it, but I'm like, you know what? Oh well. Yeah. You know, like I said, it was my first mistake, got it out of the way. You know, so, that's why, and I'm never going to change that. I'm not going to... You know, say, hey, Joe, you want to fix this up? I mean, well, I shouldn't say never. You know, maybe 20 years you know, from now, I'll say, hey, can we add a, you know, something, you know. But right now, it's just going to stay like that because, like, you know what? You learn from it. Yeah. Yeah, that's so uh, pretty much triple check your spellings. Get a tattoo um, above it, like, with an arrow that says, like, <laughs> exactly. X2, yeah. like, times two. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. Um, so, these, yeah, so that was, that was that one. Um, but then the next one that I got after that was my Mice and Men logo, excuse me, which this I stole off a t-shirt, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to lie, um, <laughs> but Mice and Men was one of my absolute favorite bands, still are, um, and their music has got me through a lot of long nights, through <laughs> a lot of rough nights, <laughs> um, and so that's where the majority of mine are, just a lot of music inspired tattoos, and excuse me, so... 
I, you know, I, I suffer with depression. I have for a very long time. Just now, you know, sort of the last couple of years, two or three years, probably I've started to deal with it in a better way than I have been, which before I was just getting angry and pissed off and yada, yada, yada. Now it's more a little bit more level-headed. Um, but anyway, so these guys' music, like I said, has got me through a lot, you know, a lot of long nights. And so that was the meaning behind this, and I just thought they are just an amazing band, and still are, you know. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, so that, that was that one. That one hurt a lot. <laughs> that, that one, yeah. That one also took a while, too, just because all the stars and the, yeah. the wings and stuff. But, yeah, that one, whew, that one hurt. <laughs> but um, they all hurt. Don't get me wrong. You know, people, <laughs> people that say they, they don't hurt, they're lying or they're drunk, either one. But the, the tattoos hurt, man. They, yeah. yeah. But, um, so then, yeah, so then after that was, yeah, My Music Saves Lives tattoo, which is on this, uh, my left leg. And, um... So that one kind of speaks for itself. It's just the bold, black, three words, music saves lives. And that one I did triple check, make sure that's like the correct way to say it. Like, you know, you know, lives, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, so anyways, um, and so that, yeah. I, I don't even think you really need anything else to go behind it. Just yeah. music saves lives. There's really yeah, cool. not more true of a statement than yeah. that. You know, exactly. especially with the music that we listen to. It's heavy, it's aggressive, but there's a reason behind it. And there's that, those lyrics, they have hope in it. Exactly. And that's, you know, that's no matter what style of music you listen to, there's always that hope. Mm, exactly. And uh, it's very important to have that. Yeah, exactly. So that one sort of went kind of hand in hand with the Mice and Men one, but um, they are done it two different times. But anyways, um, so that one, yeah, that was very just like, you know, Joe, I want this, just simplistic. I want it just like this. And he goes, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. He went right with his like, that is actually really cool, um, which I thought was actually really cool. But yeah. Um, I just said cool like four times. Anyway, so um, so then after that was my Parkway Drive one on this side, which is um, a pirate ship, and it says Shipwreck Bones Carry My Seasick Heart Home, which that one is from their song Karma, uh, Parkway Drive. I found them. A buddy of mine says, dude, listen to these guys. I'm like, okay. Listen to them. I'm like, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. So i just been listening to them ever since. And... Um, so that one makes it off their, their song Karma, which is a really good song. Um, I would say I have a tattoo on, on my body for the rest of my life. But anyway, so it's just sort of like just that kind of, you know, home is where the heart is. You know, just sort of being kind of lost at where I was going and just trying to figure everything out. And so that that was that one. So that was really cool. That one, again, that one hurt when I got into some of the spots because it was pretty much my leg was kind of like... It was pretty much, I was kind of sitting just like this, so I had my leg kind of like trapped like this, so like, yeah. I was just like, I'm like, ow, but, um, but no, so that was pretty cool, so that one was just like sort of, you know, just finding your purpose, finding, you know, just what you're meant to be in life, you know, so, so that was really cool, but, um, yeah, usually the music saves lives and the microphone mm -hmm. have gotten a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of remarks. Usually all positive, but with the exception of the few that go do tattoos are stupid, but those are those people. You're never going to change those yeah, people's exactly. minds, yeah. so it doesn't matter how... It could be exactly. something they, yeah. they love, and yeah. it's still... Right. So and, it's, yeah. And um, so that next one are on the back of my legs, um, and honestly, I started going for my legs because it was ramrodded in my head that, you know, think before you do these, you know, mm -hmm. think before you get tattoos. And I was still sort of figuring out what I wanted to do for a career. So I put the majority of them on my legs because that way they're the easiest to cover up. Right. Throw on a pair of pants, they're gone. No one knows. You know. And so, yeah. So, anyway, so then the ones on the back of my legs, it's um, opposite sides of the earth. One has the um, eastern hemisphere, the other one has the western uh, hemisphere and uh, has song lyrics, both of them have song lyrics. On my left leg, it says, um, It's not the life in your years, it's the year, sorry, it's not the years in your life, it's the life in your years. I get that mixed up sometimes. Uh, but again, it's a Parkway Drive lyric. And that one just sort of because I feel I've been given a second chance of life, um, probably about five or six years ago now, um, is when I hit my absolute rock bottom, you know, and so I've just sort of been you know, climbing up since then, you know, and so I was just sort of that thought of like, you know what, this is my second chance in life, this is, you know, that chance where I should be like, okay, you're meant to be here, 
go do something about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just or, you know. But uh, so so that was kind of cool. So and I got to think about like that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's not. It's not how long you live; it's what you do in that life. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people that they've only lived for you know 20 years, but they've done more in those 20 years, you know, or 25 years, than some people do in their 80s. Yeah. You know, I mean, so like my grandpa, when they were, when my family was growing up on my dad's side, they were traveling all over the place. You know, so my dad's been in five or six different states he's lived. So yeah, you know, he's, he's done a lot. You know, um, but yeah, so it's just sort of just like I said, just sort of do as much as you can for as long as you can. Um, but then on the right side is um, Data Remember, it says All I Want is a, a Place to Call My Home, which is off their song All I Want. And that is one of their most popular songs. Um, it actually gets a lot of radio play, um, which is awesome. But that one just sort of um, because I never really fit in where, wherever, really wherever I was. Like in high school, I wasn't a jock. I wasn't, you know, one of the popular kids. Obviously, I wasn't a popular girl because, well, I'm not a girl. But, you know, I just, I just sort of never fit in in school. So I sort of had to find my own little way, and that was just to sort of seclude myself from, you know, population and just be like, whatever, I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what that was. And, and I got to think about just sort of a lot of them. So like, you know what, it's true. I, I've never really fit in. I just want to find somewhere that I can call home. That yeah. would be, you know what, this is where I belong. And that's when I went to college and found, you know, radio. And I found really just, really getting into just like sort of the heavier music, you know, the metal, just the heavy metal, everything like that. That was sort of when I found that, you know, this is my niche. This is where I'm supposed to be. You know, so now I'm just sort of starting to just delve into that. Literally just head first, feet first, whatever you want to say. I just freaking cannonball right into it, you know. So I was just sort of, you know, and a lot of these, like, I, I think subconsciously, I think not as much of it when I got them, but now I see it even more. It's like, yeah, that's, you know, kind of what I was, you know, going for when I got it. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, that was pretty cool. So the next piece was this cross with wings on it, which was kind of a long story, but there was a couple girls in my high school that, you know, the, the older sister was supposed to graduate, you know, a year before me, the younger sister was in my grade, and unfortunately when they were coming back from a job interview, um, whether it was distracted driving, whether whatever it was, they ran a stop sign, and a truck just T-boned them and killed them instantly. Um, so that was that was a tough time for us, um, for the entire school. Because like I said, we had a graduating class. My class was of 63 people. You know, we knew everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was a very small town. You know, if there's a thousand people in the Pavilion, I'd be surprised. You know, um, so that was so that piece was for them. Excuse me. And that was with the wings and everything. And so the cross is on there. That was actually done in Batavia at High Voltage Tattoo. And that was a fundraiser for their owner who was diagnosed, I think it was with cancer, I think it was, or leukemia or some kind of something. Um, I forget what it was, like a year and a half ago when I got this. But, um, yeah, so they threw a fundraiser for him and so went and got that. And then I added the, the wings and the date mm -hmm. um, afterwards. And Joe put on the, the wings and the date and everything. But, um, yeah, so that, that was a very, that, that one has a lot of, a lot of meaning behind it but um what was really cool about the wings and everything is i went down to their parents or to his uh sorry to their uh to their dad and i said hey would it be okay if i got something for you know for their daughters and he goes yeah go for it i'm like awesome so like i showed him exactly what i wanted to do because we had these stickers made up that you know forever in our hearts mm -hmm. uh, gretchen and sarah and it was a, a cross that Sarah and then Gretchen, which was their names and the date. I said, well, I kind of want to do that, just, you know, not put their names, just kind of get the wings and stuff. He's like, go for it. I'm like, okay, cool. So I got his, you know, his approval on it, which, you know, meant even more. So that was mm -hmm. really cool. Moving up, the only other ones I have are on my shoulders, um, which this was my first one. This, uh, my shoulders, sorry, the microphone was my first one. This is the first one up here. Um, it's a song lyric that says, fight for your passion, don't ever stop till you're at the top of your mountain. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, just mountains and sky and stuff. Um, and that is a song lyric by a band called For the Fallen Dreams. Whenever I look at this one, when I wake up in the morning, I just look at it, I'm like, okay, there's my inspiration for the day. You know? And I've had people tell me when I get into just those down moods, be like, dude, look at your freaking shoulder. That's what you have to fight for. You know, and it's been, that's sort of what I got, it's just, you know, for that inspiration. So then the last two that I have are on this arm. Um, this was my latest one, my, my Eeyore, 
tattoo. This song um, I got from my mom. Yeah, so I went and got this actually for her birthday. That was her birthday gift uh, to her from me last year. Yeah, I got something on me for her. Makes perfect sense. But anyways, so I got that. Um, so my left arm is going to be more family, just like all family oriented stuff because, you know, the vein obviously in your left is closest to your heart, mm -hmm. which, you know, family, you know, is the most important thing in my life. Um, I have a very tough family, let's put it that way, very um, out there kind of family, but we're very close. We might fight and bicker and, you know, go back and forth like little 12-year-olds, but we'll still defend each other. You know, it's, yes. it's very close, but, you know, very... It's an interesting family, let's put it that way. <laughs> so the last one that I got um, is the big one up here, which is uh, it's the outline of Maine. Uh, this was a piece for my grandpa. Um, I'm planning on getting some for my dad and some for my sister that I planned out. Um, so this one, it says, uh, This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Or let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, which that is a little prayer that he says every night before he goes to bed. And then... Up on top, I have his signature. Oh, that's, yeah, so, that's really cool. Yeah, so he is completely against them. Does not like them. They're a waste of money. Yeah, everything like that. But when I told him, when I showed him this, and I said, "This is for you, Grandpa. This, you know, I want to get this for you," and he goes, "Okay." <laughs> you know, so it, it was just sort of that, like he understood, not so much accepted, but mm -hmm. he understood why I got it. And I was a little hesitant at showing him because my family. With the exception of two on my dad's side of the family, they are against tattoos. They, like I said, think they're just a complete waste of money. Why would you do that? You know. Has any of those relatives seen this documentary series at all? Not really. Um, and the only reason is that because I do have an older family. They don't know what Facebook is. Oh, okay. They might know what YouTube is, but they don't know what Facebook is. They, you know, they don't do all that. You know, um, and the family that would see it, they're they're the ones that are against it. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are against tattoos. That's why so, I thought and, it yeah, might be good for them to see it to kind of understand, understand the stories, yeah. the meanings, and all yeah. of it's great. So yeah, it, it's kind of one of those, like, yeah, I'd love to show them, but I just, I know what the end result will be. It's just, it's not going to change their mind. Yeah. You know, because, like I said, they're older, they're not going to do anything. It's like, you know what? Cool. Awesome. You know. So it, it kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's like, you know what, this is for me. Exactly. So. And that's what's important. And speaking of you, I know you've touched on it a little bit, but what are your future plans? What um, other, I know you're talking about your sleeve, yeah. you're talking about this. Like, what is the next piece? Um, well, the next piece I'm really trying to gun for is the sleeve. I have, you know, a lot of ideas just sort of like shaping them because I can't draw for crap. <laughs> so I have people design stuff for me because I have a Dragon Ball Z tattoo that I want to get um, because that was one of my favorite shows growing up was Dragon Ball Z. So I want to get something with that. Um, like I said, I want to get the piece for my dad and for my sister. Um, I have my sister's one already planned out. My dad, I'm still going back and forth on what I want to do for him. So it's just sort of, I, I, it's kind of another reason I want to do is just sort of break that stigma that... You know, people with tattoos are you know they're mu they're mischievous. You know, they're you know they're 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 the hoodlums. You know, it's like no, we're actually really decent people and are probably actually in charge of a lot of the businesses that you work for. Yeah, I, I'm glad and, to see that with our generation and generations to follow that the stigma and sort of that persona has gone down quite a bit. Oh, definitely. You yeah. know, there are nurses, there are people in like medical professions. You know, saving mm -hmm. people's lives each and every single day, mm -hmm. and they'll have you know their favorite band lyrics. Yeah. They'll have this or the you know whatever, and yeah. they're completely sane, completely normal, and right. they're, you know, the best people in the world just because they have ink doesn't really mean anything about their insides, yeah. and if they're bad or good people, it's just, they are good people. You know, yeah. this is, you know, great artwork. It's not mm. satanic, it's not no, this, exactly. it's not yeah. that, it's not, yeah. it's nothing but an artistic representation mm. on your body, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, there was one time I was in the hospital, I saw um, one of the male nurses there, he had both arms, he had sleeves, you know, yeah. both sides, and, you know, he was just going around, and he still just had the, you know, the scrubs on, that was it, he didn't have to wear long sleeves or anything, so that was kind of cool to see that, I actually mm -hmm. talked to him about it, I'm like, dude, those are badass, you know, those are awesome, you know, because it, it was a lot of detail. I mean, it's the um, canvas of your yeah. life, you know, you put stuff on yeah. that has meaning, it's not just you know, oh, that looks cool, that looks cool. It's like there's a reason behind it, yeah. whether or not it's, you know, the most detailed thing or something more simplistic. You know, it has, a deep, like, a deep reason. Exactly. And I think that's really cool. And, you know, just looking at people's ink and just seeing what people have and their future plans is... It's incredible, and uh, I'm actually tattoo-less, but I, I'm starting to <laughs> right. uh, definitely put some things together and uh, yeah. sometime soon, but... 
you know, for me, for the layman that doesn't have a tattoo, <laughs> what would be your advice? Um, the advice would be, just like I said, triple check your spelling. You know, obviously that cliche of just make sure it's something you really, really want. Mm -hmm. And the ones I have, you know, some of them were kind of, you know, off the cuff, but it was, you know what, that's what I was going through at that time. That's what I wanted at that time, obviously, so now I have it, you know? Yeah. It's just that it's sort of like people say, it's a constant reminder, which is exactly what it is. Um, but yeah, just, just, just really, really think it out. Don't really do what I do and get like a huge piece for your first one, because like I mean that's kind of like a big piece. I mean, if if you're really not sure, get something small. Mm -hmm. Get something that you know what, uh, just to see. You know, kind of like you said, like with the with my cross, that was you know flash piece. So it was something like that. If that's you know if you go and get that, it's like the only one like you put on your shoulder or something where no one's really gonna see it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's your way of saying okay, I tried it. I want to see what it was like. Don't like the pain? Never mind. You know, so it's it's sort of give and take. Other than wrapping this up, I just wanted to ask once again, like, what's the future plans of this docu docu series? What uh, can we expect? What can the fans expect? Um, how do they reach out if they want to be a part of this? Can they just you know find you on Facebook and just give you a message? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, just look me up on Facebook. I uh, just search uh, J T White. Um, I'll pop up. You know, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Uh, you know, follow me on Instagram, uh, CupCadet1805. You know, if I can sit down with the bands I've been listening to and talk about their tattoos, I'd be set. Yeah, you know, I'd be like, all right, cool, let's do this. <laughs> you know, so it just that, that's kind of what I want to do. You know, do I see it going like that? Maybe not, but do I want it to? <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, it's just it's just sort of one of those I kind of do it for fun right now. Yeah. You know. But if it gets more serious where I can actually like do something with this, then hell yeah, I'm going to take it as far as it can go. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks again for talking with me. It's been really great understanding, you know, the man behind uh, the mission of this Dr. <laughs> yeah. Series and uh, just all the hard work and time that you've put into this. And, uh, you know, thanks again for just talking with me. Definitely. Thank you, dude. Yep. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Man.